Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with the review for Claws Season 3, Episode 2. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so this casino. Okay, that Desna's telling the girls that she wants everybody to be involved at the casino because, damn it, she is not walking away. Nova and Mac, they are not fixing to take what's rightfully hers. And you know Virginia is pumped because she can't wait to be at that blackjack table working. And, and, and uh, Desna tells her, no, you're going to be at the nail salon. But everybody else is going to be down at the, um, at the casino. We're going to play this right. And then in no time, we will be running that shit. Run, running that shit. Hey, running that shit. Hey, running that that shit. Hey, that shit. Hey, run it. I can't believe they say shit on TV just so freely. Later on, who should come into the uh, salon but um, Uncle Daddy and Toby. Uncle Daddy is begging Desna for the license to run the clinic over there. And they're all like, boy, we never thought we would see the day where Uncle Daddy come begging Desna of all people for something. But he can't do nothing without those licenses. Desna was just like, you can get the license. It's a thousand dollars a day. And he was, you know, about to start fussing like a day. And uh, she was just like, oh, do you want him or not? He, okay, you know what? Let me not even mess this up. Okay, I'll do it. I'll agree. I, that damn clinic is making some good money. You talking about $30,000 a fucking month for a license? Doesn't it coming up, ain't she? So when he's leaving out, Roller pulls up. Uncle Daddy asked Roller, you know, is Clint, did you take care of Clint? And, and, and he said, yeah, it's all done. Okay. And Uncle Daddy was like, so are we good? And he says, no, not until you tell me about my damn parents. Okay, no, we not never going to be good. Toby says, Roly, your uncle loves you. And I said, oh, that Toby done got quite vocal this season, hasn't he? Toby going to be a problem. When Rolla goes in there to see Desna, he was just like, why are you at this dump? And she was like, dump? This is like what I know. I do nails. I'm going to get the money from the casino. We're going to franchise this. This is going to be all over Florida. All right? Not just this one little place. So, you know, Desna still has in her mind that she wants to expand her nail shop. Now, Roller, he love him some Desna with his old thing. They child just as fine as can be, ain't he? But no, we ain't got time to be having some ass right now. She got to get down to the casino. And how about we see what you can do at the casino, too? Now, Uncle Daddy take it on to the clinic and child is already popping. The nurse was just like, shit, you know, the news traveled faster than black Twitter that this place was opening up again. It's a whole bunch of people up in there, okay? Uncle Daddy about to make them some money again. They trying to get everybody settled and situated. We see Dr. Ken in the back. He back there talking to Bryce. He also trying to text Polly. And he didn't text her 10 times and she ain't returned no text messages. Bryce was like, no, 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 no. This ain't how you play it. And, you know, Dr. Kid was like, that's my girl. I said, oh, poor Dr. Kid. <laughs> he just don't know. Okay, that is not your girl, first of all. And uh, Bryce was like, yeah, no, you need to make her miss you, basically. Quit texting her all the damn time, especially if she ain't returning no text messages. You little too thirsty. So while Bryce is talking to him, the nurse comes in there. We need you out there. So he leaves out and Uncle Daddy comes in there. And uh, Uncle Daddy wants Bryce to be working with him again. Bryce never really had the issue with Uncle Daddy. It was more so Roller. So Bryce is in this peculiar little spot. I think Uncle Daddy wants Bryce to work for him again. And, you know, kind of bring the whole family back together. And, and, and Bryce wants to do it, but not really sure if he wants to either. Because, you know, all of that shit that happened with him and his wife. But anyway, down at the casino. Desna and the girls, they go down there. You know, minus Virginia, of course. And uh, when they walk up to Nova and Mac, they were like, well, we thought you guys were just going to be silent par partners. Oh, no. Okay, Desna's here. Nova introduces them to her general manager. Desna says, okay, well, this is my general manager talking about Polly. That damn Polly got up there and said that she was the general manager at Treasure Island. <laughs> and that some, some other shit. But that, that girl can make up a story so quickly in her mind. I was like, child, it must really be good to have somebody like a Polly around. Polly will come through in the clutch, right? Anyway, they're about to have this muscles contest. They need to have extra security around there. And, and uh, Desna says that's perfect. Okay, that's what she got quiet in for. That's the strong arm. So we got all that established. Okay, well, show me to my office. And when Desna gets walked away by the um, one of the employees, you know, Nova ain't really looking forward to Desna being around. And Mac was like, don't worry about it. She ain't going to be around long. She don't know shit about the casino business. Okay, she won't even last a week. I said, oh, honey, you don't know Desna. 
so quiet Ann is on security detail we see her talking to remember the security guard that was talking to roller in the parking garage okay well he's talking to quiet Ann, and he sounds like one of these ones that's going to be confiding in her eventually because he's talking about how he always lonely and ain't got nobody to talk to on the detail around there desna already gets thrown into the job okay so he's in her office the guy just kind of drops her off and leaves she gets a call from quiet Ann. says there's some old shady looking mormons there and uh, she needs to come down there and at the same time virginia's texting saying sos sos like please call back sos sos now while desna's trying to help virginia then the man comes and says you're needed on the floor and desna was like fuck already i said girl you said that's what you wanted right so um she goes downstairs to see who these strange mormons are all right, and they talking to Nova and Mac. When she walks up, you know, they was just like, well, ain't you nosy? She can't even really talk to him long because a fight break out. We see this lady come flying over the crap table. And they over there fighting. And, you know, Desna turns around and rushes over to them like, what the hell is going on over here? The lady done called her a bitch. Okay, and I guess that's fighting words in that town. So um, they arguing and fighting. And Virginia calls and says that the alarm won't go off. And, you know, she needs some help. And she's all panicking. And Dean, he's freaking out by the noise and you know the police are about to come down there and the alarm is going on it's just a whole bunch of mess it was so funny when the police walked in the door and Dean was just like you shoot black people <laughs> Desna knows that she's gonna have to go down there to the to the nail shop so she rushes down there turns off the alarm you know Virginia was like how did you do that she said I said one two three four off and Virginia was like you didn't tell me to punch off and and, and Desna was like I didn't think I had two short bus Dean was like, Nessie, you can't talk about my girl like that, okay? That's very insensitive, first of all. Secondly, you should have wrote it down so, you know, she wouldn't know. So, you know, Desna's just like, I love when Dean puts Desna in her place. Now, outside, Jen's baby daddy shows up, EJ, you know, and she's just sort of like, so you're not really here for a manicure, are you? He said, nope. All right, he just got out the day before, first order of business. He wants to see his daughter. Jen gives him the brush off. Okay, I'll call you. And he was like, don't forget. She says, I promise I'll call you. But she does not want to have to deal with EJ, obviously. So she goes back into the, into the nail shop and, um, you know, Desna's trying to calm Dean down. Dean feels like he's got tinnitus now from all of that. We see Toby come in. He's coming, I guess, to get a manicure, but something is just not right about Toby. You know, Toby's all helpful, wanting to talk to Virginia. She was just like, look at you. Like, where'd you come from all being helpful and all of that? Dean was like, if you want to be helpful, then you will help me find a person that shot Virginia and I. And Desna was just like, listen, you're going to have to ease up on that revenge fantasy otherwise i'm gonna send you to dr ken and dean was like everybody knows dr ken is not qualified <laughs> even dean knows this but De desna's worried about dean that he is just fixated on this like dr ken said you know virginia was like don't worry about it okay i'll keep him busy dean was just like she's talking about intercourse <laughs> and desna was just like fine whatever whatever works dean now we see polly she's co-general manager with the other guy so she's trying to move into the office of course he doesn't really want her there but hey since you're gonna be here then go over these time cards make sure that everybody only have 20 hours we don't want to pay um any benefits around here i was like clearly not a general manager job but whatever he's going on and on about how he owes mac and nova his life you know that he had all these felonies when he was younger oh felonies you know polly is intrigued by the story that is uh this other general manager besides she's trying to get this information um you know as much information as she can so she tells him let's unpack that some more now, last week, somebody mentioned in my comments that they thought that Virginia might be a medium of sorts because of that strange scene when she gets the eye from the lady, okay, last week. And um, we see that that's probably the direction that they're going with Virginia because she's with Uncle Daddy, bumps into him at the, um, at the hamburger stand, and she pretty much reads him. Something is bothering you, but you need to let it go. You need to forgive yourself. He said, how do you know that? And she said, you know what? It's okay. It's fine. I know. You can let it all go. And Uncle Daddy just starts crying. Y'all know Uncle Daddy has always been quite the emotional one. <laughs> but, I mean, look, you tried to get the poor child killed, Uncle, uh, uh, Uncle Daddy. Rolla almost killed this girl. And... Now, she's up here holding on to you just like, that's okay, let it go, let it all out. He's crying in her lap. 
this season. Strange thing to add, but that's why I love this show because they always put weird little things like this into the show. So now Uncle Daddy knows what he needs to do. He got to talk to his baby boy. Now, back at the shop, later on that evening, you know, while Desna's there with the girls, um, the, the black lady accountant comes by. And she was like, you said that we can talk, you know, here. It's going to be safe. And Desna was like, well, who is those strange Mormons that was at the casino? And the black lady tells her that um, she's not real sure they have something to do with this account that she doesn't have access to that says trip. But it's a whole bunch of money. And we know that Desna ain't getting a cut of that. So she was just like... So she sits down with the girls and she was like, you know, they wasn't going to tell me about this trip account. Okay, this shit is like Zlata all over again. We ain't doing that again. That's for damn sure. Jen tells them while they sitting there that the baby daddy is out. And they're all like, sort of like, well, what does everybody think? And she was like, everybody don't know. I ain't said nothing. And they're like, well, why? What are you afraid of? And poor Jen, she's afraid that her daughter, who is, you know, half black, her father is black. You know, Jen is afraid that um, she might be de depriving her black child of the black experience. And uh, I guess she doesn't really want the dad to get a hold of her black daughter, possibly even persuade her to come live with him. You know, that probably wouldn't happen, but you know, Jen is, is, is worried about that. She's crying. And Quiet Ann was like, don't, don't worry, don't cry, okay? You're making me feel bad for the white people. <laughs> it's the white people, too. No, don't cry, don't cry. Virginia tells her, all you need to do is sit and talk to him. Now, Bryce tricks R Roller to come and have a conversation with Uncle Daddy. When he walks into the room, he sees Uncle Daddy sitting there. You know, Roller tries to leave out, and Bryce is like, no, just hear him out, just hear him out. So he sits down, and Uncle Daddy says, you know what, you're right. I never told you the truth about your parents, but he's about to tell them now. And long story short, Roller and Bryce's dad was... A hell of a gangster, but he was an asshole when it came to being a father and a husband. He used to beat the mama, you know, their mother, his wife. He used to beat the kids, and Uncle Daddy knew all of this, all right? But he said he never really wanted to get involved because the way a man run his house is just how a man run his house. That's how the thinking was back then. He said the mom would come over to the house and, you know, want his help, and he, he would never help her. As a matter of fact, the last time that he saw her alive, she had came to the house because the daddy, I mean, yeah, the daddy had been beat him up, which was his brother, had beat her up, and um, he took her back home. Turns out that his brother ended up killing her, beat her to death. That was it. Uncle Daddy couldn't take it, went over there and killed him. And Uncle Daddy felt all of this guilt, though, because that's his brother, and I'm sure he loved his brother, but he couldn't stand by, and he felt guilty that the woman needed his help, and now she's dead, and the kids, and all of that, right? So you would think that Rollo would give him some slack, but Rollo was just like, well, why haven't you told us this? Okay, and Bryce says, wait a minute, I remember this. I remember, you know, he would beat us up with the VCR and, you know, but Roller doesn't remember. I guess Roller was too young. Uncle Daddy tells him that he's sorry, that he prays that, you know, um, Roller will be able to forgive him. Well, don't look like Roller's going to be able to forgive him. As far as Roller's concerned, Uncle Daddy, you are dead to me. So back at the casino, we see Desna. She's talking to Polly, telling Polly how everything is crazy there. You know, everybody's in her face. Everybody needs something. Everybody wants something. But I still feel like they hiding something from me, trying to keep me out of certain things. You know, this whole trip situation. Polly is still avoiding Ken. <laughs> she got to deal with Ken one way or the other. But anyway, while she's in there talking, Roller come rushing in. And uh, Polly was like, on that note, let me go deal with this. She leaves, and Roller wants some. You know, Desmond's like, uh-uh, 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 now I'm at work. You know, you can't just come in here. And he was just like, Desna, I need it. Okay, I need it. Oh, Lord. She was like, baby, you want me to squeeze your throat? <laughs> I was like, girl, you and Roller are a mess. Okay, now while they in there with that, down at the um, casino front desk, uh, this demanding sister goes up to the front, and she was just like, uh, I was supposed to have a suite, okay, so put me in the damn suite. Nova was just like, yeah, uh, seems that there might be a mistake, you know, there's no suites left, and she was just like, you gonna put me in the suite, you want me to call Trip? Jennifer 
Jen is standing right next to her, so she's listening to all this. And the Nova take her a hit on her oxygen. And then she says, you know what? There probably was some mistake, okay? A suite is available. Let me take you to your suite. When they walk away, Jen, Jen calls Desna, who's in the throes of passion, having sex with Roller, and tells her one of the bodybuilders in the competition knows about Trip, so you need to get down here, you know? And Desna's like, okay, okay. I said, Lord have mercy, this show. So later on, we see the woman. She's on the phone. She's fussing. Something about her being pregnant, you know, talking to Trip, and this person not wanting to, you know, hear anything about it. Uh, Desna and Jennifer are following her and listening. When she hangs up the phone, Desna says, what's wrong, girl? She says, well, he think I'm just going to go away just because he wa he married and has kids? You know how you just be talking. They're going to have to give me a half a million dollars to keep my mouth shut. This is when Mac and Nova walks up, and they trying to, get, you know, just get Desna to get away from this woman who is you know, got the big ass mouth and about to tell it all. Desna was just like, no, you know what? Since I'm part owner and all of this, I want to be involved in the competition too. And they was like, you know what? Fine. You can be the master of ceremonies. How's that? But they got to deal with this girl with this big mouth right now. So they rush off and we see Polly dealing with Ken. Okay. And uh, he, he wants to be with her. She says that they can't be together. Because as far as Polly is concerned, she makes up shit so she doesn't have to deal with shit that's going on in her life. He was like, what's going on? She says, I'm not capable of being with anybody. And then it broke my heart when Dr. Ken said that he loved her. And you can't tell me that you don't love me. And she says, is that what you need to hear? I don't love you. Okay, did you hear that? I don't love you anymore. I said, oh, Polly, you know you still love Dr. Ken. She gets up and leaves. I said, you're just going to crush that poor little man. We see Jen still going through the guilt. Okay, she's at the little dollar store with her daughter and her daughter was like mommy can I you know get a Barbie and she was just like yeah you can go on and get a Barbie so we can go and the little girl says that uh, ain't no black Barbies there and uh, so she was just like you ain't sis you ain't got a you know little a little black Barbie for my girl and uh, the lady says no we don't have any black Barbies and she started naming off all the black shit to them. bitch we ain't said none of that okay but while the lady is naming off all of that jen has a flashback or should i say a flash forward of her life when her daughter is older who's complaining about tired of being the only black person at the family functions and she's tired of eating pumpkin pie and you know she's complaining and complaining and jennifer is feeling bad that her daughter you know has grown up around all of her people and not none of her folks and when she finally goes back to the present you know and her daughter was just like you know what that's okay i'll just get this one and Jen says, oh, no, no, you don't. We're going to go find you a black baby. Jen has decided to take uh, Virginia's advice. And she's going to go talk to EJ. And she says, baby, we're just going to talk, right, to Bryce. And Bryce says, yeah, that's it, that's it. You know, so they walk up and Bryce big and bad. You know, I, I got her that you want to show my daughter, you know, her black side. Long story short, that damn Bryce so stupid. The, the guy goaded him into a fight. And even let Bryce beat him up because this guy was much bigger than Bryce. And I'm sure this guy could have beat Bryce's ass. But he let Bryce beat him up. And his friend that was there got it all on video. The guy looks over at him. He said, did you get that all? And he says, yep, I sure did. And he says, uh-huh, we're going to show the judge this foot, this this uh, footage. And uh, Jen was like, I thought we was just talking. Well, you see what the talk did. And now you done made it way, way worse showing that your damn husband is crazy and can't take care of the, and, you know, possibly can't take care of your daughter. So I was just like, oh, this is going to be a mess. But, you know, Jen was just like, you will never get our baby. But Jen is nervous. Now, Desna goes and talks to the girl who's pregnant by Trip. She says, you might not want to do that. The girl's sitting in the bar and she's drinking. Well, listen, I want to try to help. You know, I know that Trip is running money through, you know, laundering money through the casino, but you got to tell me who he is. And she was like, you don't know who he is, don't you? Isn't this place half yours? I mean, don't you work here? Desna was just like, yeah, but it, it ain't really like that. But her phone rings. She gets distracted. She turns around. She got to handle something else. Now, Virginia says they need a ventilator. And, and, and Desna was like, listen, some shit you're going to have to figure out for your damn self. I'm busy. When she hangs up the phone, though, the black girl then walked away. But then she turns around and she sees Nova and Mac over there talking to the general manager. And they see, must feel her eyes on them. And then they turn around and they all look at her. And it was such a spooky feeling when they looked over at her. So she gets suspicious. So she goes to her security cameras and she gets one of the girls, I guess that works there. And she was like, can you read their lips? And the girl tells her basically that they was plotting to kill 
old girl, the, the, the black girl who's pregnant by Trip, whose name is Penelope. That they're going to let her win, uh, give her the money, but then they are going to kill her before she can even cash a check. She was like, oh my God, are they going to kill somebody? Desmond's like, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Back at the office, Polly is trying to snoop around, and uh, the GM comes in there. Now, this is in Nova's office. And he's like, how can I help you? And she was just like, yeah, I think that that painting is stolen. And uh, he says, well, first of all, I painted the painting, so it's not stolen. You sure you're not looking for this? It's the safe. He opens the safe and he pulls out this box and then he lifts up a damn strap on. She was like a strap on. <laughs> like, I wasn't really looking for that. And he's talking about how it's this ancient Colombian strap on. And he's talking about all of it. And, you know, Polly gets wrapped up in the fantasy of the story. And, you know, she comes over there and she's talking to him about the strap on. And even says something about her how her family used strap ons to, uh, to treat hysteria. <laughs> something like that. I said, child, this damn yeah, Polly. At the end of it, you know, she gets gives him a hug and uh, she was like is this what you needed okay but while she's hugging him she's looking over at a picture and um, she sees uh, someone that ran for governor and it says you know love always trip okay and aha this is who trip is Desmond's looking for Penelope okay has anybody seen her nope but Polly says I know who trip is the governor of Florida quiet Ann says oh my god my brother is running against him Desna just says we need to find Penelope because they're gonna kill her so they, they spot Penelope across the room but Desna can't get over there because Nova walks up to her and says okay the, the show about to start you know I hope you break both of your legs <laughs> Quite was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that is not how the saying goes. But Desna gets up there, and you know she's the MC, and she's introducing all of the people in the in the competition. You know, Penelope is one of the um, bodybuilders. She gets up there and she poses, and then she gets tens all around. But during the competition, the GM goes and tells Nova how you know they were snooping around the office, and Nova says, "See, that's more reason why we don't even need their ass around anymore. They ain't nothing but a problem." Okay, now when they get a little break in the competition, Desna goes and tells Penelope, girl, listen, they're going to kill you, and I'm your only way out, so you need to do what I tell you to do. And she says, well, how do I know I can trust you? And she was like, at this moment, you ain't got a, you ain't got a choice, sis. So I guess they come up with something. Desna goes back out there to announce the winner, and the winner is, surprise, surprise, Penelope. Okay, Penelope, come out here and get your uh, prize, girl. No, Penelope. Penelope, Penelope, where are you, girl? Where are you? Okay, trying to give you this money. Penelope never comes out. She says, oh my goodness, you guys, just give me a cute, a couple of minutes. Let me back, run back here and see what's going on with Penelope. But we see that Penelope has made it over to her auntie's house and that uh, Quiet Ann and Polly had dropped her off over there. So she's safe for now. Now we see uh, Virginia and Uncle Daddy and Toby and uh, Jen and Bryce. They're talking about helping folks at the clinic not running it as a dope spot and actually helping and healing rehabilitating people only giving people the medication that really need it and not folks that's just some dope fiends uncle daddy is now trying to go legit because he has seen the light by who oh medium virginia everybody there is confused like uh what exactly is happening here oh child uncle daddy then turned over a new leaf we gonna see how long this lasts <laughs> Now, Roller comes and talks to Desna, and he tells her that, you know, he, he tired of just hitting and quitting, okay? He want to do this with her. He wants to make it happen. He wants to be in a relationship with her. You know, the shit that they've been through, you know, he knows that this is what he wants, and Desna is just like, you know, we can't do that. I'm fine the way it is. Besides that, Desna feels like she can't trust anybody, and she can only take care of herself. She just got to focus on protecting herself and her crew. And that's it. So she goes into the shop afterwards and she's telling everybody how she done pissed off Mac and Nova. And Polly was like, you better be careful with them because they strange and they dangerous. Polly been keeping her good eye on everything around there. The employees lying on the time card like it's a whole bunch of shit going on at that casino. Quiet Ann said, well, you know what? I had a good time. You know, she was rubbing oil on, on the bodybuilder com com competitors all day. And Virginia has been doing so well that Desna decides to promote her. Okay, girl, now you are nail salon manager. Virginia was like, oh, shit, me. Desna tells him how Penelope is going to tell her all kind of shit about, you know, Trip, the governor. So they're going to take this information and they're going to get they cut of the money that Trip is 
uh, you know, is laundering through there. And honey, they going they gonna run Florida. And then the last scene, you guys, we see Desna. She's Big Willie style. You know, she's at the casino. She got her leopard shit on, titties pulled up real high. You know, she walking through. She going to her office. And, uh, yeah, she's the big man on campus. So she thinks, all right, lights her cigar, puts her foot up on the desk. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets is playing in the background. And then the camera pans to Penelope. You know, she's in the bathroom and she calls out to her auntie. Okay, and then she walks into the room where the auntie should be. Auntie ain't there, all right? Instead, it's the general manager and, and not Polly. He just lunges at her with this big-ass knife. And child, they done killed Penelope. They snatch old Penelope up. Yes, Penelope dead. All right, you guys, let me get off of here. Get on back to work. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.